to fulfill promise meeting developers where they are, Kong Gateway provides a variety of options how you can deploy and configure Kong Gateway, starting from something simple like declarative config in external file and uh, ended up with something like managed service and Kong Connect. And in this video, I will show you and explain different deployment strategies that you can use to deploy Kong Gateway today. My name is Victor Gamov with Kong and welcome to this Lightboard video. Probably one of the simplest ways how we can start with Kong is to download Kong uh, binary and provide declarative configuration for your services and you're good to go. So that's why we're going to start with this one. So we have Kong here and we have Kong YAML file. That will include our declarative configuration for our Kong objects. That will include services, that will include plugins and routes. And we will be able to start Kong and providing this declarative configuration. Um, also, in this mode, admin API is available in read-only mode. And only way how you can update configuration, it needs to submit this config file into this config endpoint with whole new configuration. If you need to change one of the routes, you're changing this file and all this file needs to land uh, back to Kong through config or restart Kong. And because this configuration doesn't use anything, it doesn't have anything, we call it dbless mode. This is the simplest way how we can start with Kong, even for your testing, for your development, and even if you're running some sort of integration testing, this is the great way to start because it is the most lightweight thing. More importantly, if you're running Kong using Kong Ingress Controller, Kong Ingress Controller deploys Kong and ships this um, declarative configuration through Config API. Now, in the future, you want to scale your deployment and you want to have ability to have incremental configuration of your Kong services. So in this case, you need to enable Kong Admin API for write mode. With this, uh, we need to introduce a database in this case that will be storing our configuration. And our Admin API will be available uh, with routes for services, for routes, and for plugins. This is mode where we're gonna be using our database. And in our documentation, we call it traditional. Interesting enough that traditional mode can be scaled into cluster of Kong. So in this particular case, we can have a single node cluster if there's such a thing as a single node cluster, but we can also deploy another instance or another instance here. They will connect to database and share configuration and they will operate as a single cluster of instances. Configuration will be stored inside database. However, it is not cluster that will providing full coordination. You still need to have a load balancer in front of it. It also can be Kong and also can be Kong configured with DBLS mode um, that will be responsible for routing things between those nodes. But configuration will be consistent here. With this, uh, we also can enable some additional tools like a Kong Manager, which is available for free if you want to use it uh, with a free tier or you have a developer portal. So you will be able to use this with database as well. With increasing load to database, because of the number of nodes that you want to run, um, you might find yourself in a situation that instead of managing your application and using this uh, for uh, solving the business problems, you're actually managing this database. So we need to solve this problem somehow. And thankfully, Kong also supports if you have a run, if you're running cluster of this database, cluster of Postgres, Kong also support um, um, integrating with the read-only replicas. Um, also Kong, in order to optimize performance, it doesn't call database each and every time. There will be some process that will be uh, refreshing internal caches of the Kong. Um, but 
This is the traditional mode with database admin API is available. Um, and uh, when you restart con instance, this configuration would be uh, rehydrated back from database. Now, in order to solve the problem that I just mentioned with um, too many connections to the database, since Kong 2.1, we have this new mode deployed where different Kong nodes will take in different Kong roles. So we now have a separation between so-called data plane. This is the something that you have in other configurations that will be serving uh, only serving user traffic. So user only will be killing Kong. And in another Kong instance, that what we call control plane. We can have multiple Kong data plane instances and centralized configuration would be handled by Kong control plane. And interesting enough that control plane also support database persistency and only control plane will be talking to this database and configuration that we, if we will change configuration of one of the nodes, this configuration will be pushed. As you can see here, we have uh, this data planes and Kong itself is not standing on a critical path of user requests. Your data planes will be serving requests. And the uh, control plane, if control plane would, for some reasons will go down or connectivity will be lost for some time, data planes will continue to serve your traffic only they will be using like a stale configuration. Another problem that we're solving here is that our control plane reduces the traffic so database will be uh, released from the uh, from the serving so many requests from the uh, from data planes. Uh, also data planes will have only in memory configurations so in case of uh, some of those nodes will be compromised. Um, the configuration will not be, this is, will be not critical for overall infrastructure. So, and um, as uh, we mentioned the previous components, Quonk Manager and Developer Portal. Those things are also um, available and they can also work in the, in the hybrid mode with the, with the database and stuff. So this situation uh, solving many problems uh, that we will introduce with traditional mode when you scale your deployment. Again, um, this is not like one size fits all in different uh, deployment modes can, can, can support different uh, use cases. And uh, in this particular case, you can also deploy this in multiple different environments. However, we're not solving some of the problems that uh, bigger organizations who run like thousands of API trying to solve. Specifically, how we can segregate this deployment based on environment. Say you want to have a uh, development environment, you want to have uh, your QA environment, production environment where you deploy your APIs and you want to have this configuration. Uh, with this hybrid mode, you need to replicate this configuration across multiple different environments because because different environment needs to have its own control plane. So um, this is one thing that you want to solve this. Another thing that when you're running this complex infrastructure that will be depend, some of these configuration will be depend on your database. You also need to be responsible for running this uh, disaster recovery installation of your database, uh, Postgres, for example. And uh, in order to solve this, uh, many organizations already are using managed service to, for their databases. Uh, what if there would be a control plane, managed control plane that can solve the problems with multi-tenancy, can solve the problem with the disaster recovery of your dev application, and also provide all these nice features. So this is where Quonk uh, Connect comes into play. So Quonk Connect essentially, it is a your, we still have our Quonk um, data planes and we will have cloud-based beautiful clouds I'm not good at this that will provide you with a uh, managed control plane a 
happy clouds. Yes, I'm not good at this, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that provides you ability to segregate and uh, separate and have a dedicated uh, groups of uh, quonk uh, data planes that can be stored from different environments. That's done by Runtime Manager. We have a service hub that allows to um, discover and publish your services, your APIs and things like that. Developer portal also available as a manager, managed solution with customization in all the things uh, that available in Service Hub, you can publish in, um, in uh, developer portal. And also analytics. Um, you can observe your APIs, you can see how the traffic comes and getting very nice uh, analytical reports. Um, and obviously everything is persistent. And with this uh, runtime manager, you can have uh, different groups of these services deployed into different places. Specifically, if we want to run this, you can have a one runtime group that runs in locally in Docker or some of the runtime groups that runs some of the runtimes that runs in Kubernetes cluster or maybe in some VMs. So that's that's the Quonk Connect. Very important thing that I didn't mention that this format that we use as a Quonk um, declarative config, this is a centralized place how you can manage your quant configurations. You can have um, this quant configuration available in hybrid mode. You can submit this configuration into quant control plane. You can submit this configuration to quant connect. And after that, you will be able to submit this into quant connect into multiple different environments. So that's that's important component that allows you to support modern uh, GitOps or API ops uh, configurations. So now you have it. We're going to start with the simple DBLS mode. You can develop with DBLS mode, going into traditional mode and uh, storing configuration inside, um, inside database. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to try this today, uh, check this out, uh, getting started script that available at get.conghq.com. Um, you're going into more complex deployment with hybrid mode, or you can go straight directly to cloud, into happy cloud, where we can rule your API jungle with Quant. That's all for today. Uh, subscribe and enable notifications. Write down in the comments if you have any questions for upcoming videos. There will be more to come with this uh, beautiful lightboard. My name is Victor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day.